start with a, uh, an, uh, embargo uh, broadcast section with no embargo, sorry, followed by an embargoed section for 10.30 p.m. tonight, no live tweeting during the broadcast section, the microphone provided. Paul. Thank you. Hi, Ange. Hey. Ange, do you have any fresh injury concerns ahead of the Nottingham Forest game, and in particular, is Brennan Johnson okay to face his former club? Yeah, Brennan's fine. He's, he's no problem. Uh, the only one is uh, Richie. Um, he's had a bit of a niggle with his knee the last couple of weeks, and um, we kind of feel he's probably... Better he takes this weekend off and sort of hopefully totally recovers and be available for Newcastle next. Um, but everyone else is fine. As much as you're aiming for higher than top four in, in the short term this week, you've gained a point on Aston Villa, Manchester United have lost. Do you see it as a straight shootout between you and Aston Villa for, for Champions League football next season? Um, look... The latter positions and points tally would suggest that, um, but you know, as I said many times, it's it's not something that's at the forefront of my mind. What's in my, you know, what's more important to me is you know how we're playing and you know to finish the season strong and you know, wherever that takes us, that takes us. So um, you know, I'm not I'm not looking at other clubs' results on the weekend um, to see whether you know we can get you know into the you know, fourth position or whatever position it is on the ladder. I, I just don't think that's where we are as a team. You know, we've got to focus on ourselves this year and, as I said, finish strong. And if that means we finish you know, fourth or whatever, then great. But, um, you know, uh, we're getting to the tail end of the season now. I think we've got eight games to go. I think Villa's got seven. So, But you can see on the weekend and during the midweek, every game's there's some, you know, everyone's fighting for something. You know, it's a good time of the year to be involved. Away from Tottenham, it is the old firm this weekend. I, I just wondered, will you be watching? How would you sum up that rivalry? Yeah, I think it's early on Sunday, so I'll definitely be watching. And uh, yeah, it's 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 a it's one of the biggest rivalries in world football, mate. And uh, I'm very much on the green and white side. And uh, yeah, um, hoping the lads. Uh, I know what it means to the supporters to win that game. You know, it's it's you know as much as we talk about derbies and they mean more this one does you know I, and I lived and breathed it for a couple of years and it's a really important game <coughs> you know, for both clubs um, and you know looking how tight the table is this year I think takes on extra significance because you know that most of the time that's what's going to separate the two sides maybe at the end of the year so it'll be a cracking game and uh, I'll be tuning in. Hi Ange, um, you said on Tuesday after the West Ham game that your attack lacked a, a bit of clarity of thought. We have seen though a really nice understanding develop between Brennan Johnson, who's been fantastic the last couple of weeks, and also Timo Werner. So I just wondered how do you view that attack when you have those two playing with Hume and Son up front? Yeah, no, that you know, that, that part of it I think has been um, yeah, you know, has been developing well and yeah, you know, part of our process is, you know, you try and provide information, feedback to the players, but it's up to them to take that on board and put it into action. I think it helps when they get rewards for it, and certainly Brennan, as you said, and, and Timo both sort of scored or assisted the last couple of weeks, uh, probably longer than that last four or five weeks, which is great. But, you know, that's not our only avenue to attack, and, and you know, I thought the other night, you know, we had some, some better options out there that we... We just rushed a little bit. You know, that was kind of looking at our analysis. We got into some great areas, and probably you know, some 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 of our decision making wasn't great. And probably we, like I said, we, we had more time than we thought. But again, you know, you provide that feedback back to the players, and uh, hopefully, um, you know, we, we can begin to sort of develop in that area as well. West Ham's equaliser, of course, came from a set piece. I just wondered how much of a concern, or is that something that you're looking at in training, working on specifically in training, trying to reduce the number of goals that you concede in from set pieces? Yeah, look, I, I don't think we've been. I think we've been pretty good at set pieces. I mean, you know, you always get, every goal you concede is down to something. Um, yeah, it was a decent delivery the other night, and they got some big guys. The rest of the set piece, I thought we had, we handled really well. I thought we gave away too many corners. I think that was an issue for us when you do against a team like West Ham, who are such a big side physically, and they got such great delivery with Bowen and Ward Prowse. You, you're asking for trouble. Um, so I thought again that was part of the game. We thought we could have handled a bit better, not to give away so many. But I think you know, I, I think those kind of things people just kind of look at and snapshot. I mean, our goal. Our winning goal against Luton came from a defensive corner, our setup. So, you know, I think um, with all these things, I tend to take a longer-term view on them and 
uh, for the most part, I think we've been pretty decent. And finally for me, obviously you faced Nottingham Forest on, on Sunday. They're fighting for their lives at, at the bottom of the table. They got a big win over Fulham in midweek. So what kind of a challenge are you expecting from them on Sunday? Yeah, massive. As you said, they're fighting for their, you know, for their, for every point, every goal. And uh, I mean, I, I think you would have noticed that across every game that everyone is fighting for something, whether that's up the top, up the bottom, in the middle. Everyone's fighting for something. And and and. From our perspective, we know that we have to hit a certain level of, you know, effort, competitiveness every week, and, and for the most part, we've been pretty good. I mean, I think the Fulham game was probably the one that you know, was disappointing for us, but even against West Ham, as you know, we weren't pleased with the outcome. And but you know, it's a difficult place to go. Um, you know, they're a very well organised side, and and it wasn't through lack of effort that we didn't get what we needed. And it's going to be the same on the weekend. Um, you know, for Forest, like I said, everything for them is 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 crucial at the moment so they're not going to come here and just give us anything we're going to have to earn everything and uh, be up to us to do it Angelo I'm um, Brennan Johnson going up against his former club Forest and I, I just wondered how he's developed I was just looking since January he's got five goals including one for Wales and what sort of change that how have you converted him into being more lethal really since you signed him in August oh, well I think made him more lethal. I think, you know, his goal scoring record before he arrived to us was, was pretty decent. I just think, you know, we play obviously a little bit differently and it takes time, you know, and especially in those front areas I've said before that there's a lot more pressure on new signings because they get invariably measured against, you know, outcomes in terms of goals and assists and if you don't have that then... But his general play was always, you know, still very good for us, it, it, you know, but what I think now he's found a bit of confidence and a bit of consistency in, in both... An understanding of the way we play, and like I said he's getting the rewards, which is which is great. But you know, he's still a young guy, and you know we we bought him with very much an eye that you know whatever he does this year, we know there's a lot more in him. And when you see improvement, <coughs> that kind of encourages us even more because it means that you know if we invest the time in him, he's gonna you know he's gonna become a super player for us. I just wanted to ask, um, this week's Spurs financial results came out and look healthy. Is that something now as a manager you have to be, I know it's very dry, but is that something you need to be conscious of with thinking about the summer and targets and PSR and all of that? Yeah, I mean, you, you, the, the detail of it is not of, you know, it's not my area, again, of concern or expertise. It's more, like I said, the overall picture of, you know, where we are as a football club and what it means for us in terms of, you know, further building on what we've started, and um, you know that 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 is important because if if we were restricted, you know, we've only had two windows so far to to kind of try and build a, a side we hope will be successful. Um, you know, if there's if there's more positive a more positive outlook from a financial perspective, then that certainly helps us with our planning and and kind of you know not just for you know this window but for the next couple of windows. <laughs> and potentially what we can do to sort of you know, get the squad to where we need it to be. <coughs> was that something you were conscious of when taking this job? You know, is that a question you ask now as a manager? Well, how are they set you know, financially, investment-wise, and all of that? Well, you know, to, to, to a certain extent, but you, you, at the same time, you know that, you know, that ultimately until you're in the role and you, you understand exactly, you know, the, the workings of the football club and... and you know, what's re what's going to be required? Um, you know, I think you, you 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 always go into these things with your eyes wide open. In that, you know, you don't expect um, sort of real clarity about anything until you're actually in the role. So you can ask the questions, but you know, it's like you know, they can ask me questions about how the team is going to play, but until I actually put it into practice, they're just words. You know, so um, you know, from my perspective. I think, it, you know, I've had a pretty sort of clear line of communication as to where we're at as a football club and what I've sort of taken on hasn't surprised me in any way. I, you know, we're in a good position and hopefully we can build from, build on that. One thing as well, some fans want to see against low blocks players taking more shots from range. And I, I'm just wondering... I know this You're is just wondering if that's how I coach? Or yeah, no, no, no. do a poll amongst supporters <laughs> and say, what do you reckon we need this No, week? no, no, no. This is a very niche question, but I, okay. just mean, I just mean, like, 
in your in a game model like yours, is that just like a side point? You know, is that something you would ever talk about against a certain team? There will be spaces. Can we have more? Can we have more shots uh, <laughs> from distance rather than that kind of you know more intricate way of playing? Okay, yeah, so are my players allowed to shoot? This yeah, is exactly. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> <Do> they <laughs> get it, fined it, if they I shoot. I get that. You, you probably you, you probably would have had that. Yes, they are allowed to shoot. <laughs> yeah. No, look, it, it's it's you know, as I said the other night, there was there was some opportunities there that we probably yeah you know, we we kind of rushed things um, in terms of you know the way we we could create more opportunities for ourselves, um, but again, I always think those kind of things are just a. a a moment in time. I think if you look at the goals we've scored this year, I can remember at least you know, two or three. Sunny in particular scoring from outside the box. So it, it's it's not something that you know. There's no, especially in that front third. A lot of it is around the quality of your players and the instinctiveness on your players. And, and all the teams I've had, I, I try and make it as less structured in that front third as possible. But you always, I think, achieve better outcomes or more possibilities, more avenues to goal, um, because ultimately that's what my teams want to do, score goals, and they always have, is you know, by creating some sort of fluency that that allows players to, to make the best decisions in there. Hi, Ange, how are you? I'm good, mate. Um, just going back a little bit to the, the financial uh, stuff you're talking about just now and, and budgets and, and looking forward to maybe bringing players in in the summer. Um, Spurs one of the only teams that actually spent money during the January transfer window and clubs generally were very watching very carefully what they were spending. Um, thoughts the Premier League going to have new financial rules and maybe not take points off teams that go over it but maybe a financial penalty. Is that the way forward regarding clubs maybe spending more money and, and adding more quality to their squads? I reckon you're as kind of um, as uh, intricately sort of your understanding is about as good as mine with that question um, <laughs> in terms of what's happening. Look, I, I understand that, you know, obviously there's and I come from a world where it has been very, very regulated. So equalisation in Australia, a bit like American sports, is very, very big. Yeah. So I've come from that world, and I didn't like it one bit. But there's always an understanding that you've got to sort of create some sort of competitive balance so that you know there isn't too much of a divide between you know clubs that you know can spend um, you know at random almost at times against clubs that have restrictions so you want to keep that balance but I've always felt not at the expense of bringing the you know or, or demotivating people from being the best they can be and sometimes I've felt so in Australia we've had you know a salary cap and we've had you know um, I think a bit similar to what they're calling a luxury tax and it keeps the competition even yeah but I always felt it also suppressed the ability to kind of you know, maybe try and be better than, than, than the rest. Um, yeah, America's kind of similar, but I think whatever model they come up with, you know, it's, it's, it's that balance of keeping it competitive because you do want competitive leagues. You don't want teams just to outspend and win things. But at the same time, not suppress that ability for, for excellence, you know, because I've always said it's not just about having money, it's how you spend it, you know, and you can spend, I can have half the money somebody else does, and if I spend it better, I can still beat them. So, so it's that it's that balance. But um, for you and me, mate, we'll leave that to the financial people. We can we'll talk about the football. Something I may understand more is is football. Then uh, much go. was made of your late goal against Sheffield United because it came set out. I think it was the latest goal at that moment scored in Premier League history. There was a later one last night. Um, why are we getting so many late goals? And, and our matches now almost are you preparing almost for two-hour matches? Two hour, not sorry, one hour and a half. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, no, but no, you're right. But I think it is. It's a product of yeah you know, the extra time we are playing, and I I, I think I've said it before. I, I kind of I used to kind of make substitutions around the 60 minute mark, but knowing it's about half an hour or so to go. But now I, I know that very few games will last less than sort of 95, 96, 98 minutes sometimes. So you you you've got to factor that into it now. And I think 
that also means that you know your players need to be aware that 90 minutes is not the end of the game. Um, a hell of a lot you saw they see saw that last night, but still a lot can happen in that last period because you know sometimes we look at the you know the clock and say oh it's the 80th minute mark there's 10 minutes to go, but actually it's probably 20 minutes to go um, when you think about all the stoppages that, that can happen and um, yeah you know, your players and the way you kind of use your subs uh, I think becomes important in that. And finally, for me, you've often said about you, you don't look at the league table this year as being a, a barometer of success, but how your team are moving forward and for next season. But are you further on at this point now than when you walked through the door on day one you thought you would be? I didn't have any sort of thoughts on, on where we'd be. I, I kind of knew, obviously, after the disappointment of last year, that you know, we had to show signs of progress or else... Might not even be sitting here if we if we didn't. So that was the first thing: is can we progress, and what does progress look like? For me, progress looked like well, the players we sign are going to be important. The windows, I think we've had two positive windows. There's no, I don't think there's any doubt about that. How we play, well, you know, whether you you think it's effective or not, we've definitely changed the way the team plays. Um, you know, we, we've got kind of we're in a better position on the table if people want to look at that so you kind of all those things suggest we have made progress but I'm really you know my, my reticence around saying it's it's been a success is that it that doesn't mean progress means it's been a success because I still think every year you go into trying to be win something and we're not going to win anything this year so you know I can't walk away from that single f fact but in terms of getting us to the point where we can win things well there's enough signs there so far, but I still want us to finish the season strong to say that you know we're we're in a decent place. Um, yeah, I'm sorry, I was just writing about. New, I was just writing about New. Um, you're not new, obviously. Um, Chelsea game. We now know. Talk when it out, the, mate. Just, uh, just trying to get, <laughs> get out. Get so. yeah. uh, we now know when the Chelsea game is going to be. Yeah. Um, obviously, you've kind of gone from having lots of weekend or not lots of a few weekends off and wanting more games. You've now got a week uh, where you've got, I think it's uh, Arsenal at home, Chelsea away, Liverpool away. Is that the other extreme? I mean, how do you view a week like that? I, know, look, I, I, I guess oh, well, my point has been all year. And, and even that, that's, that'll come back off the back of us having a weekend off again, 15 days without a game. So I've just said all along, it's not a, to me, it's not about the games or the weekends. We just haven't had any sort of fluency in our calendar. Like I keep saying, some of that's self-inflicted because we haven't had, we're not in Europe. You know, we haven't had sort of significant cup runs, but it just feels like now we're going to play a couple of games. We've had you know midweek game, play on the weekend, then play Newcastle. Then we're going to have another weekend off. We're going to be sitting you know, on our hands for two weeks, and then people say, "Oh, that you'd be nice and fresh." And then we've got to play three games in a week. So, for me, it's it's just we haven't had the rhythm this year. Like I said, apart from maybe the first sort of you know ten games of the year, um, you know, when we had we had Carabao Cup, and there's a game pretty consistently then. Um, it just seems like it's been stoppages, and we knew that anyway. Now going into that, you know, obviously with you know, the teams we've got left, um, Man City's in the cup, FA Cup, Chelsea in the FA Cup. We knew we'd, we'd get it further disruptions. Um, so it is what it is. We've just got to deal with it, um, you know, and, and sort of plan for it the best way we can. The reason I mentioned Nuno is obviously he's coming back. Um, I think it's for the first time this weekend. A very short spell, relatively, here at Tottenham. Obviously, now you probably know better than most people what it's like to kind of manage within this club. And kind of, you could see what a challenge it is for managers, regardless of how good they are. Yeah, but I think every job, especially in the Premier Leagues like that, I, you know, I don't uh, I hate to say that. I mean, I'd say that Forest is a pretty big challenge as well. You know, so it's just the nature of you know the the beast in terms of the competition you're in, and irrespective of which club you go to and yeah, there is this there is a look there's a, there's a far more shorter term outlook on everything these days and that includes football and as a manager whichever job you get these days you you kind of no you don't have you're not going to have the luxury of <clears throat> too much sort of leeway to not get things right and some clubs move quicker than others I guess but for all of us um it's just the world we we live in now where you know, that's that's the scrutiny you're under. That's you know, there's a lot of sort of extreme reactions to things that that you know invariably make people um, you know um, take action. And 
more often than not, it's the it's the manager that that's kind of on the tail end of that. But yeah, you know, I, I think for all of us, we understand that we we go into those roles with their eyes wide open, and I'm sure Nuno, you know. When he went into Forest, didn't think it was going to be an easy task. And when he came into here, didn't think it was going to be an easy task. But like I said, that's, as you said, rightly said, that that's not the measure of whether somebody's a good manager or not. Uh, briefly, I want to ask you about Giovanni Lo Celso. Felt like a season that was maybe going to promise quite a lot for him. Obviously, it looked like his future was maybe elsewhere. And then you and him kind of had a chat about what this season was going to bring. Been quite a fragmented one for him. Obviously, had a few injuries. Why do you think it hasn't quite hit the heights and, and maybe not got the minutes that maybe he would have wanted this season? Well, it's just all those things you said. It's just, but it's not just him. There's, there's been a few in that boat where they just haven't had a real good run at it in terms of, you know, there has been injury disruptions. Other times when he's been fit, other players have sort of been playing in his position. But, you know, he, he's, I still think, um, you know, he's been good for us this year. You know, through that middle patch when we had a lot of injuries, he, he you know, he kind of really stood up for us and, then he got his own injury, of course, and you know he made a real impact against Luton uh, on the weekend, and you know really helped us sort of get over the line. So he's he, oh, he look he's a fantastic player, but with all these things, um, you know you 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 you've got to keep a perspective of we're at a big club, we're going to have a big squad, and if it's not Gio, it'll be somebody else who will play that role next year. Um, no one's going to play every game, and it doesn't happen, and it doesn't happen at all the big clubs. So. Um, you know, I've never really worried about you know, whether sort of the game time players are playing. If if they want more game time, then you know there, there are other clubs that can do that. I'm, I'm looking at contribution, and um, you know, with somebody like G, like I said, he's he has contributed to us this year, and that's been the most important thing for me. Hi, Ange. Oh, sorry, just back on the financials. Um, the club did announce a loss of 86 million. It's obviously you know, big number. I mean, will that have a big impact on your transfer plans this summer? See, now you're getting into the detail, mate. You're dragging me down. And um, as I said, my discussions around those kind of issues are, are not the minutiae of a balance sheet. It's about us planning to build a side that, that potentially can be successful. So that's what we're doing. And, and nothing that's going to come out in the balance sheet is going to disrupt those plans because those plans are done in, in alliance with the people who make the balance sheets, if for want of a better word. But, you know, it's not like, oh, we're going to wait for the financial results before we start thinking about who we're going to sign. All this stuff's already in, in planning and, and we kind of know what position we're in and, you know, what we need to do uh, in the summer. Um, doesn't mean it's all going to come to fruition, of course, because, you know, there's, there's all sorts of things that other factors have come into it. But... Yeah, we, our planning is well underway into what we need to do. And um, But, you know, the, the, there's no doubt that um, from our perspective, um, we're not one of the clubs that are going to be as restricted as others. You've spoken a lot about the evolution of the team being more important than just getting into the Champions League. But is there not a financial pressure, though, to qualify, given it does give clubs a big jump in revenue? Yeah, yeah, but... It doesn't guarantee anything. I keep saying it. I don't know why people don't understand. Well, I'm talking about the I'm talking about the financial aspect. Yeah. Okay. So, so if I ask you, well, Newcastle made the Champions League this year. Did it help them last year? Did it make it help them this year? Financially, it did. Yeah. But did did it help them in a football? We're not we're not banks. We're football clubs. Yeah. We're not financial institutions. I don't get measured by the balance sheet at the end of the year. I get me me and. You can see how difficult it is for a club to juggle Champions League and if you're not building a squad. And, you know, to be fair to Eddie, he's, he's had horrendous injuries this year. You know, it makes it hard. What I'm saying is Champions League, great. Money, great. Does that mean we're going to finish third next year? No. In fact, it's probably going to be more challenging. So my role in that is not to worry about the financial pressure of making Champions League, is to create a squad that hopefully can compete in the Champions League and keep improving in the in, in, in the Premier League and have success in the cup competition. So that's, that's kind of where I differentiate. I'm not saying that, of course, everyone wants to, if they're not going to win the league, get into the Champions League because, like you said, the financial rewards. But that's not the measure. How much money you make is not why you get into the Champions League. It's what you do with that money and do you build on it? Do you build a squad or you just say, well, because we're in the Champions League next year, it'll be great. 
it's the money that it, <laughs> I'm, the point I'm making is the money that comes with it that gives you the chance to build and pursue perhaps a more aggressive plan or do it more quickly because of that money's there to then go and use it. I'm not saying the Champions League by itself is a success. Okay, so were we in the Champions League this year? <laughs> no. No. So did we progress this year? Yeah. Yes. So again, we're, we're saying the same thing: is you can do it with, you can do it without. It comes down to good decision making. Good coaching, good players, good administration. It, it's all, it, it's when you fall into the trap of thinking that money is the answer that you don't get the outcome. So, you know, I could have sat here this year and said, well, look, we don't have Champions League, we don't have Champions League's money, so how can I progress? So I never said that. I said, we've got to make progress. We've got to get, we've got to be better than we were last year. Um, so if we're not in the Champions League next year, I'm not going to turn around and say, well, we can't progress because we're not. Yeah, so I think that's. I think we're both saying the same thing, but I'm just saying that I don't think it's as big a part of it as people make out. The money is. It's a significant part of it, but it's definitely not all of it.